Um, my name is Matthew Hewlett and I'm here to present um, to you virtually um, my, my uh, contribution to today's um, uh, discussion and, and, and teach me, I suppose. Uh, my presentation is called, it's called Be Brave, Thoughts on Developing a Computer Science Curriculum. Uh, before I, I get into those details, uh, just a quick thank you to um, Mr. Spate Consultancy at Adam Spate, as well as Technocamps. Thank you so much, guys, for having me and asking me to be involved with things today. I'm really excited to be contributing and, and looking forward to the discussion um, we'll be having after um, all of the presentations, even if um, <laughs> that's people just telling me, yeah, you're wrong and we just disagree with what you have to say. It's still, still great to be here. It's still nice to have something to do in lockdown. Uh, so who, who am I? Uh, like I've said, my name is Matthew Hewlett. I'm, I'm a head of department. I have been for about eight years. I'm currently, will be starting at a school called Our Ladies Abingdon uh, in September. I have been for um, just over two years as subject lead for, for Pixel. And I'm sure many of you will be aware of Pixel Wales or, or Pixel, just Pixel over in, across the border in, in England. Um, Pixel has, has led me to develop course content, exam materials, uh, assessment materials, um, lead conferences and, 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 and so on. So alongside Pixel, I've, I've done other CPD facilitation at a, a regional level um, in the southeast of England. And I've been a mentor uh, and interviewer for ITT uh, candidates and supporter of the ITT programme down um, in, in Reading uh, as well. Um, so quite quite a broad experience of the, the computer science uh, education world on, on, on the ground, especially. Uh, and, and this is what really leads me to uh, be presenting this, this topic to you about developing curriculum and being brave. Um, because what I really want to get across to you in, in the next sort of 10 minutes or so is this idea of when you are developing your computer science curriculum as a teacher, um, in a school, I want you really to be thinking about how you can be a risk taker, how you can be brave, how you can um, try and break boundaries uh, uh, and in order to to develop the, the, the best possible uh, curriculum that you can. Not, not that you try not to create the best possible curriculum you can, but I, I really want to leave you with a sense of license as much as is possible to, to really be putting yourself out there and, and, and in this situation where you might get some things wrong uh, in order to uh, really be a part of the progression of computer science as, as an educational aspect. Uh, and one thing that leads me to, to say this is the same question that I've had innumerable times in, in all of these different roles that I've held is how do I make my lessons interesting? I've run coding conversion courses, I've developed NQTs and ITT students, so on and so forth. And, and so much of our time is spent developing people's um, subject knowledge for themselves, for the teacher. Uh, and, and, you know, at GCSE level, and, and, and to a certain extent, at A level as well, the, the subject knowledge is not insurmountable. Um, but even though a, pra a practitioner might understand very readily uh, uh, the, the, the subject content programming is the, the, the archetypal one uh, here. The question I'm always getting is, oh, okay, I get that, I understand. Uh, you know, abstract data structures, or I understand recursion now, or I understand iteration, or what an array is, and what a list is. I get all that. How do I make it interesting? I am struggling when I go into um, school and I've got my year eights or year nines, for example. How do I make that engaging? And and, and this picture on the screen here, I mean, it could quite easily be one of my classes without a doubt. I get this sort of reaction. Uh, more, more so than I should, than I should really admit. Uh, maybe it's just my teaching style. But the, 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 this question is a fascinating one to me. How do I make my lessons interesting? But, because actually, I, th I think it's not as straightforward as it seems about, oh, well, you know, you need to be more engaging, more enlivening, more kinesthetic or, or stuff like that. 
I, I think it's a, a much deeper question, and, and that is broadly because computer science is an educational topic of study. Our understanding of how to teach computer science and the best pedagogical practices or assessment points is, is in its infancy. Um, and, and you can see, um, I don't know, shadows of this in, in a lot of things that you guys will recognise back in your school, maybe limited time at Key Stage 3. Many of you will have maybe one hour a week at the school I'm moving to in September, 40 minutes a week at Key Stage 3. Um, and, you know, that's if you're lucky. There's a huge variety of ability levels in, in your average class because of the, the variety of pathways and, and backgrounds and pre-exposure to the subject that, that, that people have. We, we don't know uh, the age related milestones for the for the subject. So, for example, I think it's Jeanette Wing talks about, um, you know, in, in maths. We know that X child will be able to do this by uh, age six mathematically, this by age 10 mathematically, this by age 15 mathematically. And, you know, your, your average child will, will conform to these milestones. We don't know what those milestones are for computer science. What is the right age, the best age to teach recursion? What is the best age to teach um, iteration, for example? We don't know that. That's not been resolved uh, yet. Feel free to disagree afterwards if, if you know more on me than this. Um, but all of these things, as well as the current training, mean that we, we, we just don't have the body of educational knowledge or research that other subjects have. And the, the upshot of that is that it's very difficult for some people, many people, myself included, to make all of your lessons, programming in particular, wildly interesting. <clears throat> if we take this point here, a lot of the training is developing teach knowledge, not te teacher pedagogy. That's that's the case in England. It's been a case of what I've been offering for, for the last few years. Um, I, and it's a real challenge to, to overcome. It's very important that we recognise um, the, the amazing work that's being done, the vibrant work that's being done, the encouraging work that's being done, the brilliant work that's being done, but we're, we're still not advanced in the same way that many other subjects uh, in a school will be. Uh, and and it's it sort of, we're at this point now where there's this really interesting, I think, because I'm a bit of a geek like this, mismatch between uh, university level um, education for computer science and secondary, well, and primary uh, education for computer science. So rightly, amazingly, there's a drive in England and I know there's a drive in Wales as, as well, but taking slightly different shape, a, a, a drive for developing computer science education, i.e. it's now on the national curriculum in England, it's um, supported by computing at school. And, and over in England, the, 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 the big premise behind developing computer science is this this concept of computational thinking fantastic a good framework for understanding the subject a good framework that's applicable to students beyond whether or not they 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 want to pursue uh, the subject so the the dfa dfe in in england say you know the the computer science we need to offer a high quality computing education that equips pupils to use computational thinking fantastic okay so that's 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 uh, what your full uh, key stage one, two, three, uh, four offering there. We've got, you know, what, 10, 15, 16, no, 12 years of study. Sorry, my maths on the bounce is not very good. 12 years of study there. Well, the mismatch then, if we look at what a university wants from a computer science student, no prior knowledge. OK, in fact, the computer uh, computational thinking, we, we can offer that. And I'm, 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 I'm being simplistic here. I do appreciate uh, will we'll be covered in a month long module. 
and this is not to pick on Cardiff University. It happens to be the university I went to, and you, you know, it's. It, I figured, considering our audience today, uh, it, it it make a nice touch point. But you could look at many university courses for computer science, and and the same message rings out. You don't need computer science A level in order to take computer science. The message you often receive is maths is much more important. In fact, uh, there was a, a girls' school local to me that took some of their most aspirational computer science students to Oxford to meet students and have an open day. Uh, and they met a whole host of computer science students in, in, in Oxford University. And one of them asked, what is the most important thing we can do to prepare for computer science at, at Oxford? And, and, and the answer they got was drop computer science and take further maths instead. Now, uh, <clears throat> This is not a slight of the university system. This is not a slight of the uh, secondary education system. I'm just trying to highlight that there's not this um, match yet. And and th that is partly because, of, as I'm talking about, this opportunity to develop um, your approach to engaging and developing students at, com at a key stage three in particular, um, but into key, which leads into key stage four and key stage five, so that people at university, uh, the professors at university, are receiving increased numbers, more effusive students, and and, and people have a, a more accurate understanding of what the the subject is all about. And and what I'm trying to argue, what I'm trying to argue here, is that by being brave. Which I'll talk. I will talk about, and 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 being a risk taker, you, you are going to be. Uh, you could be at the forefront of, of 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 helping that development and and addressing this. You know what I call a consider to be a mismatch anyway. And here is the thing. Some of you might have guessed what I'm going to say next. Here is the uh, amazing thing. Much more than England, uh, and I've said it, but for many reasons. Uh, but Wales is is amazing and a fantastic place and and especially so with regards to what I'm talking about. The top two are from Pembrokeshire, which is one of my favourite places to be anyway. Uh, the point being is that, uh, you know, in the words of Crick and Moller, um, Wales or the Welsh educational system with curriculum development, the work that Technocamps are doing, the the nascent stage that um, computer science education is in in Wales creates this opportunity, and that's the word I really want to draw out of this 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 quote that's in front of you, opportunity for developing um, computer science there, uh, and you know thinking ahead to being sort of world leaders. I don't think is it, it, or, or having world leading practitioners, I don't think is is out of the question. <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you will will be far more familiar than than me with the Dalton report um, and the four competencies or the four purposes, sorry, of, of the curriculum for Wales. But that, that, you know, if I just pull out these two points that, that I found that refer to sort of developing computer science, these are saying the right things. We want to make people creative, analytical, and reframe and solve problems. This big picture thinking is absolutely spot on, as well as the progression steps, which are precise. But I don't think you spend all of key stage three sort of delving in on onto these things, uh, these progression steps, which I would argue creates this wild, big, open opportunity to be taking risks and thinking um, about breaking boundaries in, in how you're teaching computer science. Compared to the English national curriculum, which is fairly prescriptive, you've got to have covered this, 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 this. These are the things that you have to do and with the increasing deep dives that are happening um, from Ofsted over in, in England. Uh, you know, you're, you're increasingly, your teachers increasingly having to justify what they're doing, why they aren't doing it, why they are adhering or not adhering to, to this document. <clears throat> and, and hopefully what I've, I've imparted here is this concept that 
this less prescriptive new incoming curriculum that's not even in place yet in Wales, the fact that you've got facilities like techno camps to support you coming down directly from university, um, the fact that the curriculum in, in Wales looks to me to be progressive and giving ownership to the teacher about what they teach and how they teach it in order to meet these ideas here of, of, of uh, you know, being creative, resetting problems and, and, and so on. The, the point being, this gives your average teacher with the wherewithal and the, uh, the desire and drive to really be brave and, and try and break the mould in how they teach the subject. Uh, and, and, and so what, what, what are you actually going to take away from this conversation? What are the sort of things I'm, I'm talking about? So, for example, do less coding. Coding is off-putting. You've got a wide variety of pupils in your class. It's a whole new language that you need to know in order to try and solve problems. The, the key skills here, I, I, I would argue, are problem solving, not the coding in particular, at key stage three which is which I'm really directing what I'm saying at key stage three here. Focus on generating problem solving, encouraging people that way. Spend hours on historical figures in computer science if that is what you know gets you motivated and you enjoy. Favourite computer games, biggest death count when a space rocket explodes for example. Get Put yourself on Twitter, it's, it's abundant with ideas and vibrant members of the community who are always trying new things, get out there and magpie their ideas and give some of yours back as well, because creativity breeds creativity. Make links with your science and technology department. It's something we've done previously. You know, can you make a shaky hand buzzer game, for example? A little bit of the coding on the micro bit will do it. A little bit in tech to, to make it, you join it all together. Um, you know, what cross-curricular links are there? And, and don't worry too much about if you're taking a hit on your subject, you're getting people interested and engaged and, 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 and sitting up in their seats a little bit more for, for what you're doing. Engage with the educational ideas that, that, that are out there. There are some fantastic ones. Prim, um, which I think is, is um, developed by Sue Sentence, who now works with Raspberry Pi. Parsons Problems is, is a fantastic one. Uh, which I've utilised quite a lot in the classroom where there's no written code at all. You 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 write the code out for people and they have got to structure it in the in the right order. Com don't worry about your high ability students. Let them take care of themselves. Give them a methodology to progress themselves. Let them make their own piece of software, design it, implement it, test it, get feedback from you on a, a, a you know a once a lesson. And don't worry about having to demonstrate progression. Trust in the artefacts you're creating. If somebody produces something, they're saving it correctly, and it's there to demonstrate to you at some point, then you, 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 they are creating progression that you can evidence to anyone that would wish to see it. And, and, and it's not on the screen, but trust in, in the conversations that you're having on a regular basis as well. There's a, you know, obviously assessment is a huge part of what we do, but you are verbally assessing pupils all the time as you walk around a classroom and interacting with teachers who are, uh, sorry, students who are coding and problem solving. You are constantly getting nuggets of information and helping people progress. You have to trust in that. That, that is the heart of, of what you're doing. They, and there will be, I mean, hopefully, many other ideas that you have you know these middle of the night ideas where you think oh that would be great i'd love to give that a go but oh, i don't know you know will will things go crazy let it happen let things go wrong because as uh, if you ask me as things stand at this moment this point in time that there's not enough errors happening in teaching the same people are taking the subject you know it's may, having it's difficult to have it if you look at the Roehampton uh, report uh that that is um authored by sort of peter kemper miles berry every year or has been for the last few years the same people are taking the subject in the same places with the same skin color and the same gender you know we're not breaking molds uh by doing the same thing 
over and over. What can you do to be completely different and radical? So when you have that middle of the night light bulb moment, please, please grab it with both hands. And if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. It does not matter. Um, because the same things are happening all the time if we don't try and let things go wrong. It's what we would teach our kids, I think. Um, I, I'm glad to see it's quite prescient. I'm, I'm doing this uh, presentation on the 10th of June. I'm recording it. And the NCCE, uh, which has been launched in England, said yesterday that they're introducing a new action research programme. So, you know, it... it I find it comforting that, OK, it's not just me banging this drum about let's get out there, take risks and do new things that, that is being recognised in the introduction from the NCCE as well. I love this picture. I've never looked so graceful or glamorous in my life, let alone when I'm planning a lesson or something like that. Um, big caveat before I finish this all sits within a framework and, and, and an existing environment. You know, you can't just do whatever you want. I'm sure SLT will have fixed opinions on on this um, guy with a beard in lockdown saying, hey, do whatever you want, break the rules, it doesn't matter. That's not what I'm getting at. Um, but I, I Hopefully you take my point. I understand you can't do everything. You can't do all that we need to show progression and, and assessment points and so on and so forth. But wherever possible, break the mould, uh, inspire those kids in your own individual personal way uh, and don't worry if it's completely different to what other people are doing you're awesome and you will make a difference to those kids lives by doing things that way i absolutely promise you uh i've definitely run over thank you again to adam thank you to techno camps i'm looking forward to um uh hearing what you guys have all got to say uh, about this and if anybody's got any further questions about some of the strategies i'm, I'm always here drop me a line uh thank you